welcome everybody to our NIU Virtual Admitted Student Day. We've got a program lined up for you. Hopefully it's helpful, educational, and you get in touch with a lot of resources on our call today. As we're leading up to Decision Day, that's nationally recognized as May 1, um, I do want to note that NIU does not hold firm to the May 1 date. Students will be able to confirm their intent to enroll, but there's a couple of things I want to make sure that I share with you before you make your commitment, um, and, and hopefully you'll be making that soon. But let me introduce myself. My name is Maida Lagunas. I am the Assistant Vice President of Enrollment Services and Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at NIU, a very proud Husky. Um, I was also a first generation student, and um, I'd like to share that because over 50% of our student class is uh, first generation as well. Um, before I continue and tell you a little bit about the program, I want to make sure everybody's aware what the Husky sign is. And so if you put your fingers together in this way, you get the Husky sign. You got some admission counselors in here. Super excited to welcome you. Go Huskies. <laughs> All right, so for today, I'll be talking a little bit and sharing some resources and websites. Uh, from 10, uh, 210 to 240, we have financial aid presenting on some um, helpful tips. Um, 240 to 3 p.m., we will have a student panel of our Northern Ambassadors. If you're interested in what they do, feel free to ask them. If you're interested to join us uh, and be one of our colleagues and one of the official tour guides of the university, we welcome you to reach out, admissions at niu.edu. At around 3.30, we're going to have a brief presentation from our friends over in orientation. We want to make sure you understand and get as much information as you can about the orientation program that is required for all new first year students. And then we all, of course, welcome transfer students to participate as required. And then at 345, we will have one of our Northern Ambassadors lead a virtual tour of campus. As again, as you prepare to make a decision or commitment to a university, May 1 is recognized as the National Decision Day. NIU does offer the opportunity to confirm your intent to enroll after, but I want to make sure that I note two things. The first one is, as I mentioned, orientation will be here presenting, but it is a requirement for uh, first-time students. Orientation dates fill up quickly, and so once you confirm your intent to enroll and pay the non-refundable enrollment fee, um, you will have the opportunity to sign up for orientation. You want to do that as soon as possible. That will allow you to confirm some of your courses with academic advisors. So all the folks here are admission counselors. We're going to counsel you through this process and your next steps. But your academic advisors are going to assist you in selecting courses. Don't forget to take those placement tests before you attend your orientation date. The second thing I wanted to make sure I remind everyone is once you've confirmed your intent to enroll and paid your enrollment fee, you'll also have the chance to sign up for housing. Housing does an amazing job of providing virtual tours on their website, so you can take a look at some of those rooms, some of the prices, do cost comparison, see amenities and features and the opportunity to decide where you want to live and if there are any living learning communities, which can be a really fun way to integrate yourself to campus. So housing orientation at the top of your priority list once you've confirmed your intent to enroll. Don't delay on that one. You wanna make sure you get uh, the courses you want and your preferred room selection as well. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and walk you. I think it's helpful to, or guide you rather, through some of the information on how to navigate those resources on our website. So you should be able to see my screen and I am in the admissions webpage. One of my favorite things to do is to open up a tab and Google any question you have, like first generation followed by NIU. So if you have questions about next steps, you can Google next steps NIU. If you have questions about housing, you can type in housing NIU. Typically the first hit will guide you to the right resources. From our admissions website, you want to choose your path as an admitted student. And in here, I think you're gonna find some of the most helpful next steps as a future Husky. We've got the ones for first year transfer students. And for those of you who have been admitted through off-campus or online programs, you're gonna also have the opportunity to look at our next steps. So for first year students, you are going to see the official public uh, next steps. You should be receiving emails from yours truly and all the way at the bottom of those emails, we typically have linked the next steps portal. The next steps portal is different than the my NIU portal. The my NIU portal is where you confirm your intent to enroll and you pay the enrollment fee. 
The Next Steps portal is a personalized portal that lets you know which items you've completed and which items you still have to do. This publicly, there is a login that is required once you activate your MyNIU, but this public portal or public page rather is going to give you an idea. So if you're a parent, a guardian, a friend assisting a student through this process, you can always reference this and make sure that this has been uh, taken care of. So again, first step, confirming your intent to enroll and paying the $155 enrollment fee. For transfer students, it is $85. Step two making sure you're getting in the chat and the habit of checking your NIU email. It's going to be really important. A lot of your information, including financial aid information, will be sent through your email. Applying for FAFSA if you have not done so already. Um, if you are an undocumented student in the state of Illinois, you can apply for the Illinois Alternative Application for Financial Aid. Registering for orientation, submitting your housing contract, and there is a $150 housing uh, fee. Uh, taking required placement tests, completing the pre-orientation programs, which is a series of modules that are going to help prepare you for the day and help uh, show you which um, resources are available on our campus. And then, of course, upload your picture so you can get your one card. Your one card is going to be your university identification card. That's going to allow you to access the meal plans. That's going to allow you to ride the bus around campus. That's going to allow you to access a lot of different things here. On our beautiful campus. And then the final step will be to, well, one of the final steps will be to submit your vaccination records. Um, make sure that you're submitting final transcripts once those become available. There is a post orientation program as well. And then you want to be cognizant of deadlines for student health insurance. So if you decide you do not want NIU's health insurance, you can always opt out of it, but you do have to show proof that you have coverage. So if, if you have questions about that, again, you can come to this website, click through here, and you'll have some more information. I'm going to go back really quickly, and I'm going to demo that for transfer students as well. We've got some of our, our transfer students on the call. And again, you're going to find very similar next steps in here. You'll find that the, the non-refundable enrollment is a little bit different there. It also talks about credit evaluation for those credits that you might be transferring from a community college or other university, and some of the similar steps here for orientation as well. And we'll jump right into the financial aid presentation. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Congratulations on your admission, and go Huskies! Uh, I am Andre Allen with the Financial Aid and Scholarship Office. I've been here about 14 years now, uh, so I've uh, been in the seat with my uh, with my daughter. She graduated here in 2019, so I've, I've kind of been on both sides of this. So we're going to go ahead and go through our presentation about how we're going to um, look at our, our bill, what our charges are going to look like, and then kind of what that financial aid piece is going to look like in conjunction with that. question is, if you haven't submitted a FAFSA to NIU, can you still do it? Absolutely. So all you would do is just go back into your FAFSA, just add NIU. Um, you can look us up by name and location, or you can go ahead and add our school code, which is 001737. And then it usually takes us about three to five business days to go ahead and get that FAFSA. So um, there's still plenty of funding out there. There hasn't anything has not stopped. So get it on there. And um, once you're admitted, you send that over to us. We should get the information three to five business days. And then if we um, need additional information, we will go ahead and let you know that. Okay, so um, again, we're going to have to review our financial aid offer letter and you know what financial aid is going to look like. Okay, so things we're going to discuss. We're going to understand our financial aid offer. We're going to navigate MyNIU. We're going to show you where the financial aid piece resides in MyNIU along with um, you know, some of the things to look for in my NIU. Uh, we're going to talk about accepting financial aid, understand our costs, talk about some payment options, and then shared access as well. So we have begun sending out our offer packet. So this is what it looks like when it hits your mailbox. It's going to be this large envelope with a picture of Altgeld Hall on it, and it will have your name on the front there. 
So we have begun sending these out. If you've done your FAFSA more than a couple of weeks ago and everything has been turned in and you have not received this, then uh, go ahead and let us know and we will see what's going on with that. But these should be hitting your mailbox any day if they're not already there. So this is what the offer looks like. So it comes in and inside that envelope is going to show you what estimated tuition and fee costs are, uh, along with estimated living expenses. So that could vary a little bit depending on if you what housing choice that you do make. Um, there is a book and supply allowance in there, uh, travel, uh, miscellaneous expenses. So none of those you're going to see on a bill. However, things to be aware of. And there is financial aid is broken out into fall and spring. So on here, you will notice it is a full year offer, but it is broken down into two semesters because financial aid is for one year. Uh, so on here then, um, on that first page, that was all the gift aid. So that was aid that did not have to be repaid back. Now, this is your loans. NIU will never accept a loan for you, but we do offer it to you based on the FAFSA information from the Department of Education. So you can see this out there. So if it is something that you are interested in, we'll go through that a little bit, a uh, little more detail in a minute. Okay, so navigating my NIU. On here, when you log into my NIU, that is the student portal. So that is where uh, you're gonna see different things such as um, your financial aid along with your uh, student account. So you could see what your billing looks like. Uh, if, uh, when you get ready to register, this is where you're going to register. So the one thing I want everyone to pay attention to in here is when you log in, there is this uh, tile that says tasks. And in tasks, if there is something to do there, then it potentially could hold up registration, financial aid. There could be other things that it does hold up. So you don't have to check it every day, but I do recommend that you do check it periodically. So maybe once every couple of weeks, make sure. Uh, but if you have not received your financial aid yet, this might be a reason why you have not received that. So this is what your offer looks like. So if you click on that tile that says financial aid, on here, it will say exactly what your financial aid is. So you will have it broken out in here. So the MAP grant is broken out into fall and spring. The federal Pell Grant is for the year on here, along with SEOG, uh, the NIU uh, SEOG and FSO, SEOG, uh, that is the Supplemental Equal Opportunity Grant is what that stands for. Uh, their NEED grant is on there for the year, uh, Chicago Public Schools and subsidized and unsubsidized loan. So if you notice, all of the grants we have accepted for you, we know you want the free money. So the free money is automatically accepted. Now your loans on here, if this is something that you are interested in taking, you would go ahead and Go to this page, uh, select the correct year. So we're going to be in 23, 24, um, and then you're going to accept or decline, and then you can choose the amount that you would like. You do not have to take the full amount. You can take just a portion. You could decline it. And then let's say maybe I declined it, and then I realize, you know, maybe in August, you know, I might still need that. Reach out to us, and we can go ahead and re-offer it to you if for some reason you did decline it and you do need it. Okay, so how financial aid and scholarships adjust. So we assume you are all going full-time. If you are going to be a part-time student, totally okay, uh, but you may wanna reach out to our office so we can adjust your financial aid accordingly. So if you do have the merit, uh, a merit scholarship, a need advantage grant, a Husky pledge, or any type of AIM High scholarship, you must be in 12 hours to receive those funds per semester. So if you're going to be under that, you won't be able to get those awards. So I highly recommend minimum of 12 hours, especially if you have these uh, offers. Now, Illinois MAP grant. So the Illinois MAP grant is based on 15 hours. 
And that is the state of Illinois determines that. So any hour under 15, your MAP grant would reduce one fifteenth of that award. So uh, if you have the MAP grant, 15 hours uh, would be would be the, the best for you. Uh, and with that, you know, otherwise it will adjust down from there. But 15 hours will keep you on track, you know, for towards that 120 hours to complete. Uh, most of our degrees are right about 120 hours. So that'll get you done in, you know, those four years. Now, credit balance refunds, those begin processing on the third week of classes. So after week two, we lock in your enrollment and then we go ahead in what we call disbursement. That's when your financial aid, right now it shows us pending, it's gonna turn into cash for you. Once it turns into cash, two weeks after, if there is an excess that is refundable, uh, those will be processed the third week of classes. Now keep in mind that some forms of financial aid are not refundable and can only pay tuition fees uh, and on-campus housing. If you have questions about that, we're more than happy to answer that for you. So planning and cost estimator, I hope everyone has checked this out. If you have not, please go out and look at this. Take that financial aid offer in front of you. Uh, you can go ahead and put in your tuition, your fees, uh, what housing choice that you've made. Uh, you can throw in your financial aid in there and it will give you a pretty close estimate for what your financial aid is going to look like versus your charges. So what that's going to look like for your out-of-pocket cost. You can break it down into monthly payments so you can see those pieces. So I encourage everyone, take that financial aid offer, sit down with the planning and cost estimator, plug in those numbers, and then you can see what the cost to go to NIU will be for you. So I went ahead and uh, for a full-time student here, uh, I did 27 hours. And the reason why I did this 27 hours, I wanted our MAP grant students to see the difference between having 15 hours and 12 hours. So if you are in, okay, so fall, I have 15 hours. So this is a, uh, a standard student that is non-engineering, non-nursing, and non-computer science living in a double in Stevenson um, with the Husky Block 12 meal plan. So that is 12 meals a week plus $100 in uh, dining dollars for the semester. Uh, the student does have Pell Grant, SEOG, and after that deduction, the out-of-pocket with no loans was 27 28 18 so now in spring, they uh, I only put 12 hours in there. And if you notice, the difference is there is about a uh, $700 difference in that between the two. So highly encourage our MAP students to take 15 hours. Uh, you know, if you have any of those other scholarships, minimum of 12 to make sure that you're getting the maximum amount for that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now your federal direct student loans, all students uh, are offered student loans based on, uh, based on your FAFSA. So as a freshman, uh, the limit is 5,500. As a dependent, uh, it goes up 1,000 as a sophomore and 2,000 as a junior and senior. If you are an independent student, you do get a little bit more loan limit out there. So for this year, interest rate is at 4.99%. Um, and there is a little bit over a 1% origination fee. So what that means is they charge 1% pretty much right off the top that goes to the Department of Ed for the processing of your loan. Uh, interest rates will be set this summer, uh, which will be in uh, July. So we will let you know as soon as we get that information from the Department of Ed. Okay, so our parents out there, so if you're a dependent student and you have a parent that is interested in taking out what's called a parent plus loan, um, that is out at studentaid.gov and this would be the parent's loan. So, um, you know, with that, you'll know immediately if you're approved or denied. That is available out there now. Uh, and, you know, so if you do wanna apply for it, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and, you know, once you see what your charges are going to look like for the student, then, you know, you could determine 
uh, you know, the amount later on if you did not want to go ahead and, you know, figure that out right now. But that is all out um, on studentaid.gov if you are interested. Next slide. And yep, and the interest rate for this one will also be set July 1. Uh, so we will let you know as soon as that comes out. So now the Husky installment plan. Can you tell I like the dog? I mean, mission is on just about all of my slides. We have three missions now, so which is super exciting. Hopefully you guys get a chance to meet them one of these days. So there is the Husky installment plan. So you can take um, whatever your remaining balance and you can break it out over four equal monthly installments. There is a $50 uh, participation fee uh, per semester on that. But then what it will do is it will take your charges, less your financial aid, and then it would break it down into four equal monthly payments. So that's gonna be available in the next couple of weeks. You can go ahead and sign up for it right on, um, right on uh, an NIU. And then uh, it will go ahead and show that when the first bill runs, so you will be aware of that. If you decide later on, so maybe in you know late August that you're like, you know, I still wanna do a payment plan. There is a three payment option that will be available uh, once that first billing cycle runs, uh, if you do choose. Okay, so special circumstances. So right now, um, if you have received a financial aid offer and you have had a change in income, uh, we recommend that you reach out to our office and we will go ahead and kind of talk through the process of what we call reevaluation. So we can reevaluate your financial aid uh, based on a loss in income. So these are kind of some of the reasons um, that we do um, these reevaluations of financial aid. So if you're not receiving child support, maybe your student turned 18, um, change in employment, uh, retirement, um, a divorce or separation, you know, let us know. We'll talk you through that. This can take a while. It can take, uh, you know, up to four weeks or so to get all of these processes done because for us to override what the Department of Ed says, um, there is a lot of things that we do have to take into consideration. So it is a little bit of a lengthy process, but we're happy to do it and reach out to our office and we can talk about that, you know, and, and decide which ones we, we want to go through. So my scholarships, the common deadline is January 1. This one has a, has a rolling one. Um, so uh, it, January 31st is the common deadline for my scholarships. And if you log into my scholarships, um, there are still a few scholarships available out there. But once you log in, you can see what is available. But the common deadline is January 31st. So keep looking at this when, um, you know, throughout the school year to see what opportunities are out there. Um, next click, Myra. And then VPA Marching Band um, does have opportunities after these dates um, as well, but there are a few others that are still out there. So go check that out. Uh, and it's go.niu.edu slash my scholarships. Okay, so shared access. This is something I love to talk about. Uh, when you get enrolled, you can't do this today. So once you go to orientation, you get enrolled, you become a full student, uh, you would go in and you want to share your access if you have anyone else that needs to look at your financial aid. So at your financial aid, maybe, um, you know, wants to help you with, you know, maybe some of the admissions process or ask questions about your grades, those kinds of things. You can give access through this portal. Highly recommend if you need some assistance with that, because what happens once you become a student, uh, there, you know, you have someone that calls up on your behalf. We say, nope, we can't talk to you, you know, because you are, you know, protected. So if you give them access, we can go ahead and have those conversations with um, your family members or friends, uh, whoever you would delegate access to. So um, coming to a close here, um, important things to know, your student's ZID email. Make sure you are checking that often. That is where all of our, our communications come from our office and many other offices on campus. So FAFSA is completed every year. So financial aid is truly year to year. Um, but the one thing um, that's going to, we're gonna have a little bit of a change this year. 
Uh, the FAFSA will not be rolling out in October. It will most likely be rolling out in December. Uh, but we will let you know as that happens, they are making some major changes this year. Uh, but once that is available, we will be letting you know, uh, but it will definitely be, you know, pretty, uh, we'll be communicating through your ZID email and other ways as well. Uh, check that task list. Uh, that is something very important. So make sure that you are getting that done. Uh, scholarship opportunities, keep looking, you know, it's, it's a little bit like a job, right? Uh, so, you know, keep looking and hopefully you get some additional funding. Feel free to meet with us in person or virtual, um, you know, or give us a call. Our uh, office hours are Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. Uh, so we're happy to answer any of those questions. So one of the questions I saw in the chat is uh, oh. students who haven't submitted FAFSA, um, do they still have a chance to do that? Yes. So um, with the FAFSA, uh, you know, you can still go ahead and submit that. Um, even if you have not done it at all, you can go ahead and still go out there and go out to studentaid.gov. Um, you're going to want to create an account as a student if you haven't done that already. And then go ahead and get that filled out and go ahead and put our student code on there uh, is 001737. Otherwise, you can uh, look us up by name as well and make sure you, you pick Northern Illinois University. So Another question in the chat we had is, if I commit to NIU before the school receives my FAFSA, would the, would the school still uh, take the Pell Grant or would we still offer Pell Grant and students still be eligible? Yes. Yeah, so all of the funding, um, all of the funding, um, there's nothing that has run out at this moment. So if you are eligible for, uh, let's say, the federal Pell Grant, um, the state of Illinois MAP Grant, uh, you know, other, other aid that's out there, um, it, it's all still available to you. But go ahead and get that in soon because you never know when, um, you know, those, that funding will run out. But right now, go ahead and get it in and you will be considered for all of those grants. What happens when a student's GPA increases during the school year? Great question. So if you guys finished out your semester strong, uh, we can go ahead and honor the uh, a higher scholarship if, it, if you fall into the other category. So if you move up a level, so let's say maybe you move from the 3,000, you know, to, um, to the 6,000, you know, you really have a great, um, a great senior year, we will go ahead and honor the uh, the better GPA on that and, and uh, revise your merit scholarship to that. Now, if you go down a little bit and maybe fall into a lower category, I'm sure you guys didn't do that, but Casey did, uh, we will still honor the, the, the higher scholarship because that's what you were offered. Well, um, I will say, I will take this opportunity to say though, that dropping in GPA might put your admission offer uh, in jeopardy. And so we know you're going to finish off strongly. We're rooting for you, um, but be sure to keep those grades up. Keep doing what you're doing in school. Um, I received a transfer, transfer scholarship and I'm wondering if the amount changes if I end up living on campus. Okay, the amount does not change. Um, what you are offered that is for on or off campus. Um, the only thing is with our merit scholarships, they can only pay on campus charges. So if you do have, um, you know, a lot of financial aid um, that can only pay on campus charges, it would not be refundable per se if you were living off campus. Okay, thank you. Um, what is the process to get a loan not from, not from or through NIU? Okay, so the process, if you're looking for um, what we call private loans or alternative loans, um, that's kind of the, the industry wording that's out there. I usually recommend that you start with your bank. You've already made it, you know, you already established that relationship with your bank, contact them and, and talk about what potential options are out there. So make sure when you're looking at this, you're looking at what interest rates are, um, you know, how are, how are those adding up along with repayment plans? Um, also, is there any type of a credit if you if you do get good grades? Um, there are some of those private loans out there that say, hey, if you have a 3.5 GPA, we're going to deduct, you know, a 0.25 percentage on, on your interest rate. So usually I say start with the bank. Um, if you don't have a bank, you know, and you know, something established with the bank, you can check out FinAid, that's F-I-N-A-I-D.org. 
um, and um, look for any additional private loans. There's um, tons of them that are that are listed out. There's over 400, I believe, on on that website. Awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and put this um, in the chat as well. So, and then we have another student saying, "I've received a scholarship in my email." Uh, but it isn't reflected on my NIU portal. What should I do? Okay, so I okay, so I'm going to I'm going to guess here that um, it was awarded um, through my scholarships. So there could potentially be um, two two things going on. One might be you may have to um, contact them, the donor, to say thank you and send a thank you uh, a thank you letter of some sort. Um, that could be one. Um, the other could be um, that we just haven't received the information yet because there is a processing time um, with that. But I would say if it's been over a, I would say it's, if it's been over two weeks since they went ahead and um, gave you that scholarship, I would go ahead and reach out. Uh, you could reach out to us and we could do the research for you, or you can ask the donor of exactly where it stands at this moment. So it could could be a, a you know a, a few different factors, I guess. So. Great, thank you. And I've got another question in here. Somebody's mom is a is a husky. Uh, they received their master's degree from NIU. Does that still make them eligible for the legacy scholarship? Yes. If so it is. Who do I contact? Yes. So what you would go ahead and do and email scholarships at niu.edu um, with the student information and the parent information. Um, and then we will go ahead and uh, get that legacy scholarship on for the student. Wonderful. For those of you who were unaware, we do have that legacy scholarship for students who have parents who were Huskies. It's a thousand dollar scholarship. And again, contact scholarships at niu.edu. So the Husky installment plan. Um, so that is a four um, a four payment plan. So what would happen is if you go ahead and sign up for it, so that is open in, um, I believe it's going to be mid-May, so probably about the next three weeks. Um, and then if you sign up for that, it's getting, it's again, it's going to take your charges, so your tuition, your fees, if you're going to be living on campus, um, would have your room and board on there, and then it would deduct that financial aid, and then it will break out that into four equal monthly installments. So, um, and then if you decide, let's say, you know, I signed up for this payment plan and then in July you realize, hey, I'm getting all these scholarships and I'm not going to need that Husky installment plan. You can reach out to the Bursar's office and they can definitely take you off of that plan if it's something that you don't feel that you need after that. Thank you. And then I've got another one in here um, asking, uh, they're coming to NIU in the fall. Is right now a good time to look at my scholarships or should they wait until fall? Okay, so um, most um, most of the deadlines have passed for this fall. However, there are ones that populate all the time. So this this would be something I would put on your radar to check every couple of weeks and see what populates out there, uh, because there are still some available. Um, and it is you know as they find funding available, they do populate um, all the time. But the main cycle is going to open up in uh, November, and that deadline will be um, the end of January. For 24, 25. Thank you. I do see a question in here about Rockford Promise. Um, we just had a program yesterday. Um, where should we direct questions about Rockford Promise? Okay, so for Rockford Promise, um, okay, so if it's if it's question like to our office about um, that awarding, it would be scholarships at niu.edu. Um, and I know the Rockford Promise um, staff is also super helpful through um, the Rockford School District too. So they can both answer those. Uh, please contact financial aid directly with any questions that you have at finaid at niu.edu. Uh, can we give a virtual round of applause to our wonderful financial aid presenter? Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all your time. Next up on our program, we have uh, some information from our Northern Ambassadors. Awesome. And I'll introduce myself. My name is Ethan. I'm one of the admission counselors over here uh, at NIU for undergrad, uh, freshman, incoming freshman students. Um, I'll go ahead and let the three Northern Ambassadors, uh, current admitted students, uh, go ahead and introduce themselves. Uh, and then I have some questions prepared for them. Uh, I also do have some of the other admission counselors and graduate assistants um, roaming the chat for some questions as well. So hopefully we can get to them uh, too. But I'll go ahead and let the three ambassadors introduce themselves. 
Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jess. I'm a current sophomore here at NIU. I am a computer science major, also going for a minor in psychology, and I'm originally from Chicago. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh. I'm a senior here at NIU. Currently, this is my last semester at the school. I'm a psych major, minor in biology, and I'm from Elgin, Illinois. Hi, I'm Cody. Uh, I'm a freshman here at NIU. I'm currently a political science major on a pre-law track, and I'm originally from Aurora, Illinois. I'm Ben. I'm a sophomore mechanical engineering major, and I am from the Joliet area. Perfect. We got four Northern Ambassadors. Cool. All of you could please tell us what organizations are you involved in? What things on campus are you involved in? Like jobs, that kind of stuff. One of the things I'm involved in is obviously one of them being a Northern Ambassador. Um, the other thing is the University Honors Program. Uh, I really like the University Honors Program. They have a lot of uh, things that they help with. Like one of the things that I like to say is like they have free printing because we do have to pay for printing. Another thing is if you're thinking of going to graduate school, you have like automatic admission into graduate school, which is also really nice. So yeah, hopping off of what Jess said with the Honors Program, definitely something to always get think about getting involved in. I'm also in honors program too. So definitely a lot of perks about being in that program. One of the biggest perks is that for the following semesters, if you're an honors program student, you do get first pick of choosing classes for the next semester. So there's definitely a big, real, big tip about that one. Other than that, I'm also involved with the biology office too. So if you're ever looking to get into any healthcare careers, you wanna get any research assistant positions, for example, for my other position, I do help out with uh, high school field trips coming in for the cadavers here at NIU. So if you're interested in getting cadaver experience, anything like that, definitely reach out to the biology office as well. I'm a member of the club baseball team here. So uh, I play for the club team, uh, pretty similar to like a division one uh, team. However, you get to uh, compete at like a less competitive level while still traveling. Uh, I also am a member of the marching band. So this past uh, fall uh, semester, I was in the marching band. Uh, it was really great experience. You get to come to school about a about a week early um, and, you know, meet new people as well as get that uh, four to $12,000 scholarship for like the four years you're here, uh, which was really nice added on to the uh, whole thing. I'm really involved with the uh, engineering uh, program. We have a couple different clubs. Uh, one of them that I'm involved with is I'm the current president of the NIU Mars Rover team, uh, which is a great experience uh, that we have offered at the engineering program where we have a bunch of different clubs that get you real hands-on experience where you can apply some of the concepts you're learning in class to a club, an organization, uh, an actual project that you can work on. I'm also part of the student uh, advisory committee for the College of Engineering. So I get to meet with uh, faculty every couple of weeks to kind of discuss some of the uh, concerns and good things that the all the engineering students have to say about the college. Uh, my next question is gonna be for uh, Jess and Josh. What's your favorite class been that you've taken at NIU so far? One of my favorite classes that I took was Psych 245. It's considered a thinking class. It's a psychology class, obviously going uh, towards my minor. But I really liked it because my professor pushed us to think outside of the box um, how to re and how to read textbooks. Because let's be honest, I don't like reading textbooks. Um, it can get really boring at times. So she really taught us to how to read some pages, how to read a text and get the information that you really need. As well, she was teaching us like how to detect what's fake news and what's real news, especially in like uh, a world where we're surrounded by a bunch of news that we don't know if it's fake or what's real. So that was definitely one of my favorite classes. For me, hopping back off on that whole cadaver thing again, I took BIOS 311. So yeah, BIOS 311 was the human, anat human anatomy class they have here at NIU. And for the lab portion, that's where I actually have the cadaver portion with it too. So me going into healthcare, definitely having that cadaver class was a really fun opportunity. Because not only that, we recently also got these anatomage tables. So if you're interested in cadaver, we also have virtual cadaver tables too. So not only do you have the live cadavers, you also get plastinated models like of all the organs. You also have these virtual tables that is like a giant iPad where it's a giant cadaver. So honestly, it's a really fun class. And if you're interested in healthcare, once again, I recommend taking that course. Awesome, thanks. My next question will be for uh, Cody and Ben. Uh, why, did you, why did you decide on NIU? What was your driving factor? Uh, so yeah, for me, uh, I came to NIU because it was, um, I basically applied to a lot of universities. I qualified for the uh, free uh, application through Common App uh, at my school. And I applied everywhere, but NIU just had the largest financial aid package. Um, even compared to my dream school, uh, NIU was, you know, 
tripling what I would be getting there. So I obviously, you know, went here because that, um, as well as, you know, they've got a marching band club, a really good uh, law program that I'm interested in, you know, progressing through. So all in all, it was just a great experience that was close to home too. Yeah, so I chose NIU for three main reasons. Uh, the first was I got the largest financial aid package from NIU. Uh, the second reason was being from Juliet, uh, NIU was about an hour away from home, which is like to me far enough away to feel like I'm away from home, but close enough where it's still really easy for me to go home on weekends to visit my family and get to see my dog. Uh, and the third reason was I felt really comfortable with the engineering program. I had come here a couple times throughout high school to tour NIU, specifically the engineering building. Uh, so I felt like the engineering building and program had a lot to offer me as a mechanical engineering student uh, between a really low student faculty ratio. So I could really get to know my uh, professors and get to be on a personal relationship level with them where I can get good letters of recommendation. And then also I liked all the lab spaces that were offered to me as an engineering student. Uh, my next question is for those uh, Northern Ambassadors that have lived in the residence halls. Um, can you please let us know what residence hall you lived in and, and maybe what was your favorite part of that? Uh, I, for my freshman year, I actually lived in Neptune West. Um, I think one of my favorite parts about it, I look about it, I look at it often like um, I would not have met my friends if I didn't live in the residence hall, All my uh, most of my friends uh, at NIU I met because they all lived in uh, Neptune West, whether it be on like the first floor where I lived on or like on the other floors, which I met like through them. Um, we were able to hang out a lot in the lobby. We also went to Neptune Central where we where I learned that you could play pool and ping pong for free, because if it weren't for them, I probably would not have had as much fun my freshman year. Uh, they definitely taught me different things because they're all um, upperclassmen. Uh, they showed me the HSC, they showed me um, the East Lagoon. I definitely would not have gone out as much if it weren't for them. Uh, I can go next. So I lived in Neptune uh, East my freshman year. And what I really liked about it was while having a roommate, I actually got to uh, talk with uh, my uh, roommate a lot because we're friends from high school. So we really got to know each other. That's probably my favorite experience from NIU, uh, from Neptune. Uh, but I also enjoyed really being close to a uh, dining hall, which made it super easy to go get uh, food if I woke up maybe a little late for one of my classes. For me, I'm currently tuning in from mine. Uh, I'm living in Patterson Hall right now. Um, that was formerly known as New Hall. So uh, my favorite part is obviously I have my own room, which is really nice. Uh, you don't really have to share a space with the roommate other than the bathroom, which is also one of the key fe uh, features why I chose it because, you know, having your own bathroom and sink is a pretty much really, really nice thing that I need. So my next question will be for all of the uh, the Northern Ambassadors. Uh, if you could just talk a little bit about your tra transition from high school to college, maybe some tips and tricks uh, for these admitted students. I think one of the big ones that we tell students is time management you will have a lot more time on your hands. Well, I, I remember at least having a lot of time because you're not having classes uh, back to back to back unless you choose to. Uh, some people choose to have a light, a nice little gap in between. Sometimes they don't even have class on like a Friday, um, you know, and then you're just kind of relaxing and you start blowing off your homework and you realize, oh my gosh, you suddenly have a paper due at like 11.59 tonight, you know, so you want to, really be on top of things, start learning some time management trip uh, tips. That way you're not, you know, procrastinating. Cause not gonna lie, sometimes I do procrastinate, but I don't procrastinate as much as I did uh, last year, especially with all uh, being a Northern ambassador, you know, having a job and also being a student, you know, that takes some time management skills. And another tip I do have is like when you go from high school to college is say, uh, having time management will be your best ally when it comes to being a college student. Because not only will you be enrolling in classes, you'll also be possibly interested in clubs, organizations, working part time as a student. So having that balance of knowing where to allocate, you know, where you want to study, where you want to go to class, and also what times you want to go to work, having that will reduce a lot of stress for you rather than having to go by a week by week basis. Just having that steady flow of knowing how your routine is will help you in the long run, especially when you're nearing finals week, having that steady pace, it'll help you out. My tip, uh, I usually tell this to everybody is, you know, uh, make friends with the people in your classes. 
Um, that's going to be a pretty big one. Uh, for me, I usually always, you know, get the contact information of the people sitting next to me because, you know, for some reason, if I miss, you know, English class or something that day, I can always text them like, hey, uh, what happened uh, while I was away? You know, things like that, just so I have, you know, extra support systems while I'm at class if, you know, anything goes on or I need an extra uh, buddy to help me out. My biggest tip for college is, yeah, definitely making friends. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to be away from your family for a longer period of time. So having friends and people to hang out with and spend time together uh, is a great way to kind of maybe distract you a little bit from that homesickness feeling that you might get. Um, but then it also gives you an opportunity to uh, meet new people by making friends who then oftentimes have friends of other friends. And you really get to know uh, pretty much half a campus by the end of your freshman year. Awesome. <clears throat> Cody, could you maybe touch a little bit more about uh, like club sports and what they have to offer? Yeah, uh, we've pretty much got a club team for every sport you can think of. Um, personally, for my team, we uh, travel during the second semester and we stay at home uh, during the first semester. Um, that worked out really well for me because, you know, during my first semester as a college student, you know, traveling to other universities uh, probably wouldn't have been my favorite thing to get work done. So um, they offer a lot of fun uh, opportunities for you to play sports. You still get that feeling of traveling to other universities, competing at what you would expect the college level to be, but, you know, not at the capacity of a Division I team. Are any of our Northern Ambassadors an honors program by chance? Three of us are, or maybe Ben, I, I can't remember, but all of us are. Yes, yeah. I'm also in honors. Perfect. Could yeah. you maybe touch on the honors program and your experience with that? Yeah, so honors program actually offers a lot of things to our students. One of the things that they offer as well is smaller class sizes for specifically honor students. Uh, for instance, the one that I use an example of is comms 100, which is a gen ed that we require our students to take. Um, there's a specific honor section of comms 100 in which you'll be surrounded with students that are in the honors program. As well, we actually have um, some study tables available for our honor students where you can just sign up uh, and rent out those study tables. We also have the honors housing, which um, you can live in uh, while you're living in the residence halls. I don't wanna take up all of it. So uh, if anybody else wants to jump in. <laughs> yeah, so being in an honors program, some of the perks out of it, like I say before, uh, one of the biggest perks was that you get priority class choosing when it comes to the next semester for the classes. So normally to get first pick of choosing class for the next semester, yeah, you just have to be a student athlete. But one of the perks of being an honors program student, you also get first pick of choosing classes for the next semester as well. And on top of that, there's a question in the chat asking if the honors program is something you have to apply for each year. Uh, and that answer is no. So once you apply into the honors program or you get an invite to the honors program and you accept that, you're in the honors program, but throughout the semester or throughout your stay at NIU, you usually just check up with you to make sure that you're pretty much following the requirements of being in the honors program. Some of them include taking honors classes, a couple honors seminars, and at the end, if you're pursuing your full honors, uh, full honors um, degree, pretty much for that one, you have to have a capstone at the end of your stay at NIU. So pretty much throughout your stay, once you're into the honors program, you are in it but these check up on you to make sure that you are staying up the tabs and making sure that you're following the requirements of being in the honors program. Uh, I would also say, I know a big question usually asked is like, you know, if you don't make it in uh, for your freshman year, uh, you can always, you know, reapply. Um, you, if you don't make it in that first time, uh, they will still accept you later on. You just have to apply again and um, go through the same process of admission and you can still have that chance to be a part of the honors program. Uh, one of my last questions here is going to be what what advice uh, specifically for these NIU students, uh, what advice would you give them uh, maybe on campus, getting around campus, joining joining organizations, maybe in classes, that kind of stuff. So a big tip I do have when you come to NIU is that right, as, right off the gate when you come to the school, just get involved. Later, like when there's, uh, when there's organization fairs, club fairs, they have different tables set up for different fraternities, sororities, if you're in a Greek life. Basically, if you see anything remotely of interest to you when you come to NIU, you know, get information about it and join. The key thing about it is that when you're joining around campus, you're not only being involved, you're also making a lot of good connections. So like later on when you're graduating from NIU or if you want to possibly land internships or any volunteer work, anything like that, having all those connections with all those people you meet will just help you in the long run. It's more so just a win-win process. And the good thing about being involved too is that with all those different clubs and organizations, 
if it ever gets to the point where you feel like it's interfering with your coursework or you're not interested anymore, then you feel free to, you know, you, don't, you can leave the organization. It's not a bound contract where when you join a club, you're stuck with them for literally your whole stay there. It's meant to pretty much help you out at school. So if you ever feel like you're losing interest in something, you know, no harm, no foul. If you can, you can leave the club. Otherwise, biggest thing out of it is be involved and get as much as you can when you're coming to college as any NIU student. Uh, the advice I would give is don't hesitate to go up to people in your classes, especially those that the classes that are specific towards your major, because, you know, when the midterm exam or when the final exam comes and you're studying alone, I, I realize it's better to study with others because things that you're weak at, somebody in your class might be strong at. And you don't know that unless you go up to somebody, you say, hey, you, you want to be friends? Let's exchange. I don't know snapchats or exchange numbers let's talk uh because then when you you know get to the midterm when you get to final when you're studying you have people there that can help you other than your professor and your ta and as well you know especially if it's somebody that you met through your major that's a great networking connection right there uh so you know don't hesitate to go up to somebody in your class i did that and i'm still friends with my with people from my major class which is really nice uh because we've been taking classes together uh and things that i'm weak at they're usually strong at and things that I'm strong at, they're usually weak at. So we're able to help each other out and pass these classes. For me, I would probably say find your study spot on campus. Uh, you know, it can be it can be a real challenge. There's a lot of spots to study all over, whether it be in your room, the library, the student center. There's a lot of places for you to study. Personally, I like the library because uh, every time I'm in my room, I happen to you know get distracted by like something on my computer. Um, but you know, like when you, you know, find your spot, you can focus on your work and make sure that you're, you know, you're staying on track and getting done what you need to get done, which is uh, very valuable in college. Kind of going off of Cody's um, advice about finding a study space, make sure you also find like a good time throughout your schedule to study, uh, knowing when all your classes are going to be, uh, they'll be the same time every day of the week, uh, you'll be able to kind of have the opportunity to schedule certain study times, which when I've done that, I found that to be uh, really impactful for how well I perform in classes. When I set aside a certain time of the day to study, I find I'm a lot more productive when I'm studying and it just makes sure that nothing comes up uh, in the way of studying or I forget to maybe study for a big test because I already have it like in my Google calendar of studying for one of my classes. As an engineering student, you are definitely uh, kept very busy. Uh, right now, I'm going through all kinds of different exams. I have a project I'm working on in class right now. Uh, so it's definitely a lot to keep up with as an engineering student in your classes. But I hope that doesn't scare anyone uh, because it's all they're always a lot of fun. Uh, typically, you end up learning a lot uh, from your classes, sometimes probably a bit more than you want to be able to handle, but you uh, manage to get through it anyway because our professors are really great at meeting with you uh, to kind of help you understand any course concepts that maybe you're not quite getting uh, during lecture. All professors uh, here at NIU, especially in the engineering department, all offer office hours where they're going to be in their office uh, during the day uh, in their office in the engineering building, or sometimes they offer office hours through Microsoft Teams. That's a great uh, resource to use to be able to meet with your professor to maybe get some help on a homework assignment that you're not quite understanding, or if there's like a specific course concept you don't get that you just talked about in lecture you want a little more help with, uh, the professors are more than willing to help you with that. Uh, oftentimes professors also have TAs uh, where you can meet with a TA instead if you like feel a little more comfortable working with a graduate student rather than a professor. Um, but overall, there's plenty of great experience, uh, great resources to be able to use to kind of be able to manage the engineering workload. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, I've also shared the contact information for Gary Smith. Like I mentioned earlier, he is our program director. Um, he is incredible at what he does. Um, and because not only because he is a program director, but he's also worked in the industry. He's gone to a flagship school. Um, He's worked with engineers from all over the place. So he is very knowledgeable on um, engineering itself and the type of programs and how beneficial our programs are uh, for students here at NIU. Um, additionally, if you are interested in attending, um, I believe they're pretty much done for events this term, but they'll do some events uh, leading closer to the fall time. Uh, but they do events at the College of Engineering. Um, they host open houses. Those are really good times to go and see the engineering building to get to know the programs. 
Um, and then depending on if you're interested in doing like an individual tour, Gary will also be a really good contact uh, point of contact for that as well. Signing up for clubs, it really goes throughout the year. We have a really awesome place where you can go and check out all the clubs that we have. It's on our website called um, the Husky Den. Oh, sorry, not the Husky Den, the Husky Hub. Um, so that'll tell you about all the organizations we have on campus. We have over 200 student organizations and they run events um, at different times of the year. So the Husky Hub is a really good place to check out just so you can see um, any events that they have coming up, um, any meetings that they might be having. Um, so it really just depends on the type of club that you're looking to join. But a fun thing about NIU, we have a few engineering specific clubs as well, like robotics club, like the Baja club. Um, but if there's a type of club that you would like to join that we don't have here on campus, um, it's really easy to start your own club here. You just need at least five other students and one faculty member to sponsor you. Thanks, Jocelyn, for facilitating. Super helpful. I know you've been sharing a little bit of information about engineering and the different programs that they have. I heard the tail end of you sharing a little bit more about the programs that they offer, uh, the open houses, the opportunities to connect, but Gary definitely is a great point of contact. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen right now. And uh, I'm going to give you a virtual tour of the engineering uh, facilities. So give me one second. So I should be sharing my screen and I'll, I'll show you where I, uh, how I got here. Uh, so from the main engineering, uh, the College of Engineering, I think there's a lot of ways to check out uh, and exp uh, experiences, uh, a lot of ways to, to engage, I think, through their website. Um, but I went to the open house. And um, within the open house, it gives you the option to tour their facility. So you can do a, a virtual tour. So if you haven't had the opportunity to come to campus, uh, we definitely encourage it, but this is a fantastic tour to do. When I went to the open house, they sort of demoed how this goes. Uh, but the engineering building is fairly new. There's a lot of parking uh, in the back and these are loading now, but I'll, again, I'll, I'll show you what those look like. So let's make this bigger. So you can literally take a tour as soon as you walk into the engineering facilities. It takes you on through a couple of different things that they have. The auditorium, it'll provide information about those. Um, and then I can show you some of the labs as well in just a second. But this is where you can, uh, if you can envision yourself, um, they're really upgraded facilities. Um, don't mind the pixelation that sort of gets out of the way once you have a slightly better internet than mine. Uh, but you'll see it's auditorium style. Uh, a classroom is intended to be an engaging style. So you've got everything from projectors to individual outlets to be able to connect here. Um, on the second floor, you'll be able to see a couple of other things in here, including some of the labs. The last time that I did a tour of the engineering facility was pretty cool. And then just so you know, um, we do have the uh, VR version of this in case you're interested in checking it out. So let me pull up into classroom 221. So see, it has very few classrooms due to the fact that our students spend more time in the labs. Um, the average class size is approximately 24 students and students do spend the majority of their time with doing hands-on activities. Um, so I think it's really, really helpful to check this out. So I'll throw this link in the chat just so that everyone has an access to do it. I won't walk you through it, but as you can see, we've got all of these facilities and they're engaging your full on labs in the classrooms. Um, we've got some really cool, um, they were cart models out here before we've got an ergonomics lab. We've got testing consistently happening in here. Um, and then they have these glass walls. And so you're always able to see into them. Um, there's the super clean rooms. I can't even, I can't even remember all the technical terms for, for this. Um, um, but we have the Eco Marathon Super Mileage Car. I think another really cool thing that I wanted to mention. Um, so it set records for fuel efficiency going 1,359 miles per gallon of fuel. Uh, the car was featured on Jay Leno's Garage. There's a lot of really cool things, like, like I said. So I, I'm not going to go through every piece of this tour, um, but I think it's helpful if you get a chance to do it. Thanks so much, Myra. I wanted to jump in and just talk a little bit more overview about what to anticipate as you're coming in for our College of Engineering. 
So as you're coming in as a new student for engineering, something that's awesome, whether you're doing electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, industrial systems, or engineering technology, a lot of your courses in your first couple of years are going to overlap. So if you already know what you want to do, you will work with your advisors and you'll be right on track to get into your major program. And if you're not entirely sure, but you're pretty sure you want to do something with engineering, they will guide you and support you as you kind of get through those first couple of years of similar courses. And then you can still be on track in any of those areas for engineering. Our faculty in engineering are also often dual appointed, both in our College of Engineering and usually in nearby um, companies, laboratories, and things like that. So you'll often find that they are um, bringing real world experience to the classroom. And another amazing thing about our engineering faculty is that they, they choose to be faculty because they know the importance of having future engineers. So they, in their College of Engineering, we have faculty that will support you through all four years in advising and through your class room and laboratory experiences. And then we also have a lot of student organizations for our College of Engineering for our students to get involved. Sometimes uh, there's a mentality that engineering majors are, you know, you're going to be in your lab and you're going to be a single mindset and do what you need to do. But the reality is, is that you're always going to often be working in groups. So our College of Engineering is really designed for that real world experience so you can hit the ground running. So the electrical engineers work with our mechanical engineers, work with our, our industrial systems engineer. One of the culminating experiences for our College of Engineering for all of our students, no matter what you study, is our Senior Design Day. This year, that event is coming up on May 5th. Um, so you will likely be invited to participate, not participate as a student, you're not gonna be ready for your Senior Design quite yet, but you'll have an opportunity to see what our students are doing. And oftentimes these teams, again, it's not just a group of electrical engineers with a design idea. It's gonna be electrical engineer combined with mechanical, so on and so forth. So it is really important for engineers to be able to work with one another and work with other industry experts. Um, so you'll have faculty that support you. You will have student organizations to be involved in. You will have um, cross network experience. And then you will also have access to real world experience. So because our faculty are duly appointed, they know what's, what's needed in the industry and they're gonna connect you via internships and their networks for opportunities. Our engineers go where they want to go. So I've actually had an opportunity to meet with every chair in our College of Engineering. And something that I hear time and time again, when we say, what happens to our students after they graduate? What do, what do they do? Do they go into the industry? Do they go to graduate school? What, what percentage go on to get that dream job? And their response is always, well, they do what they want to do. And so we do have a handful of accelerated programs where you can do your undergraduate degree in engineering. And then your last year is actually your first year in your master's program. Um, so some students go right into a master's program and take that pathway into the industry. And then some other students are interested in finishing that bachelor's degree and getting right into the industry. But our engineers go where they want to go. So they take whatever that next step is um, for them. For incoming first year students, it is crucially important that you get your Alex math placement exam done prior to orientation. Our College of Engineering relies heavily on a strong math and science foundation. So you'll need to make sure you do that math placement exam as well as a chemistry placement exam. Um, and then maybe some other science exams if you're feeling comfortable or you're coming in with some college credit. If you already have AP exams, those can also be applied. So make sure you uh, take those AP tests this spring and do well on those tests. And you might be bringing some college credit into our College of Engineering. So in addition to those supports and ways to prep and be ready to come to engineering, um, my final piece of advice is make sure you check out um, scholarships specifically for our College of Engineering. Our College of Engineering is very focused on making sure they have representation. And so we wanna make sure we have engineers from all walks of life in our profession and in this industry. And so in doing so, we have a variety of scholarships um, for all of our engineering students. So definitely check out your My Scholarships portal to see what type of scholarships you might be eligible for. Some scholarships are gonna be after you get to NIU and you have established that NIU GPA, but you can trust that there's definitely money for our College of Engineering and our engineering majors. So apply, apply, apply. Um, we have had years where some money is what we say is left on the table. Nobody picked up that scholarship and nobody said, um, nobody applied to that scholarship. So um, lots of opportunities to get some additional money as an engineering major.
So what you want to do in engineering, we're going to get you on that pathway. Um, our College of Engineering also does have specific tutoring for our students in the College of Engineering. So whether you're starting right in Calc 1 or Calc 2, or maybe you're starting a little below that, or math maybe isn't your strong suit, we want to meet our engineers where they are because we know that no pressure, but you're, you're the future. We're all relying on you to save us as a, as a society. So um, engineering is crucially important to the to our everyday lives, and we know that here at I do want to take this time to share um, for the Northern Ambassadors. Um, though they are um, our official university tour guides, and if you are interested in jobs on campus, there are a lot of opportunities to uh, find employment, and the employment can be really flexible um, and then very helpful. So uh, one of the questions we have is do students get paid to do panels? And absolutely, yes, we do. Uh, we pay our students to share their experiences because we think it's important that future students get to connect with current students and hear about their experiences. So while we do pay them to share their experiences, we do not prompt them to share specifically what we want them to share. Um, that um, we expect that students are candid about their experiences and that they highlight the university and the aspects that have been helpful to them. Oftentimes students are the best resources for students because they're going through this experience. So some of our, um, some of our admission folks here who graduated from NIU can certainly share an abundance of resources and their experience as well, but nothing beats uh, being a current student here on campus. So um, if you are able to join the Northern Ambassadors, feel free to reach out to admissions at niu.edu if you're looking for a job. We're going to start hiring this summer. Um, not only do you do uh, uh, tours of campus, we also uh, hire students to do student panels. They help around. Uh, they get swag from admissions as well. Um, and then there's a lot of opportunities to connect for professional development. You might be wondering what is the benefit? Um, not only are there leadership skills, um, I will tell you I'll be the first to write letters of recommendation for some of our Northern ambassadors uh, trying to pursue graduate school or law school. Um, also recommendations for internships. Whenever we hear about scholarships, opportunities to engage on campus, we certainly send those to our Northern ambassadors. Um, so we are super excited to, to have you join our team. If you're interested, we are flexible about hours. We work around student schedules because we do, in fact, recognize that student, you are students first. Um, that being said, I am going to go ahead and transition. So Mitch, I'm going to hand it off to you to tell us a little bit more about orientation. Um, and just a quick reminder to everyone, admitted student days, if you've attended any of them, those are in, intended to provide you resources and connect you with campus partners. Um, orientation is required, and Mitch can tell you a lot more about that, but that's the time when you're going to get to meet your academic advisor and register for courses. So without further ado, Mitch, it's all yours. Awesome. Thank you so much. So hello, everyone. My name is Mitchell Huftelin. I am the Associate Director for Orientation and First Year Programs. Uh, I actually also am a double Husky at NIU, which means I graduated with my undergrad and master's degree here at NIU. I was also a Northern Ambassador with our Office of Admissions. And so once again, shameful plug, student employment here at NIU is a fantastic opportunity. Um, in addition to that, we also have our own orientation leaders, but I can get to that in just a moment. But I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just to share some more information about what to expect for orientation and how you can get there. So this may be some reiterations from information that you already know about, but for me, I truly believe that repetition is key in terms of getting you pre as prepared as possible for what is what is your next steps and what is to come for you. And so when you are getting ready for your orientation program and your orientation experience, this Next Steps portal is going to be your best friend. On top of our amazing individuals at NIU, this portal is going to be super helpful to you as you are trying to figure out what do I need to do to ensure I am ready for my next step. And so when you are able to log in to your Next Step portal, you will see that there are there's this really helpful checklist to know what do I do now? And so in order to attend our orientation program, one of the first things you need to do is one, confirm your intent to enroll and then pay the enrollment fee. And so to learn how to pay the enrollment fee, you can go to your Next Steps portal. You will actually pay for it within our My NIU portal, but the link within your Next Steps portal here will take you directly to that page to assist you with that process in paying that enrollment fee. Once you have paid your enrollment fee, you are going to have access to then register for orientation. And so on this next slide here, 
you will see that there is a whole section labeled as orientation. When we were taking the screenshot, this was before we were opening our registration for orientation. At this time, if you are an admitted student and you are ready for the upcoming fall 2023 semester, you will be able to see once you have paid your enrollment fee, a big button that says register for orientation. And so by selecting that button, you will then be prompted to see all of our open and available orientation dates for you to select. And so our orientation programs happen all throughout the summer. And so our first program beginning on May 30th and then extends all the way through all the way through August. And so it is going to be a one day full day experience, but you get to choose which day that is based on the available programs we have. And so if you have any questions on the availability for programs and truly really any questions about our orientation program, feel free to reach out to us at orientation at niu.edu and we'll be able to assist you with that. If by chance you do have difficulty with registering for orientation, once again, do not hesitate to reach out to us and we'll be able to walk you through that process. In preparation for orientation, this Next Steps portal is going to be really helpful for you as there are a number of things we want you to do prior to stepping foot onto campus for orientation. The biggest one I want to mention is our placement exams. And so within your Next Steps portal, you will notice that there is a section labeled placement exams. Based on your incoming major, this portal will showcase which exams are necessary and required for you to take based on that major. And so if you are in business, there's a good chance you're going to need to take a math placement exam. Engineering students, take your math placement exams. But in addition to that, there are other majors that require maybe a chemistry placement exam. Or if you know you want to place into a higher foreign language requirement course, you can take additional placement exams, but then there are only a couple of them that are required based on your program. And so if you have questions on what placement exams I need to take in preparation for orientation, this Next Steps portal is going to really help you out to determine what do I need to do next. But as I keep reiterating, and you're going to get sick of me saying it, check your Next Steps portal to see what information is up to date and how you can prepare for your orientation. In addition to that, once you have completed your orientation and registered for orientation, whether before or afterwards, you can sign up for housing too. We just recommend that you do go through our orientation um, program to ensure that you are all set um, with your courses and then you can sign up then for housing. But all of those steps are then once again listed in your Next Steps portal. So as I mentioned, please make sure that you are getting prepared for your placement exams. Sorry, I have to click through every single bullet point, so bear with me. Um, as you are in, as you are preparing for uh, orientation, placement exams obviously necessary. But if there are any opportunities for you to come in with any credits, such as um, AP credits, um, we want to ensure that you are passing along that information as soon as possible. And so, if you are coming in with any type of credit be sure to work with our registration and records office and our office of admissions to assist with ensuring that by the time you do come for orientation that we have as much information as possible. That being said, we do understand that if you are taking an AP course right now and you are waiting on those scores, that those scores may not be available until closer to the middle of the summer. You will be able to work with an academic advisor throughout the summer to ensure that if you are having any of those credits come in, that you ensure you have the right course that you are registering when you do come through orientation and edit in terms of preparation for the fall semester. Last piece I wanted to mention about our placement exams is that we do, re we do recommend that these exams are taken at least two weeks prior to your orientation date. And so if you leave here today and register for orientation, just know whatever date that is, get those placement ex exams done at least two weeks in advance to ensure that our staff, our academic advisors, have the most up-to-date information to register you for your classes. If we don't have that information, it makes it a little bit difficult to place you into um, what we believe is the most correct course for you to start here at NIU. But with that being said, when you do register for classes during orientation, they are not set in stone. And so we will be able to get you registered for some courses to set you up for the fall semester. But if things need to change, you can easily reach out to your academic advisor and they will work with you to ensure your schedule is all set based on all of the credits you are bringing in to NIU. With that, I will move on to, once again, orientation. So that is why I'm here today. And so orientation, as Myra mentioned earlier on today, is a required component for you as an 
as an incoming student. And so there are a couple of things that encompass your orientation experience. And so our orientation programs are either in person or virtual. With that being said, we really encourage our students to attend an in-person orientation program this summer to ensure that you have the experience of navigating campus, connecting with faculty and staff in person, and using that one-day experience to get as many questions answered as possible. Um, we find that it may be easier to do so in person. With that being said, we do know that we may have individuals that are coming from California or states that it's just a little bit harder to get to campus um, throughout the summer. And so we do have our virtual programming to allow you that opportunity to get connected with our staff, get connected to campus resources, and additionally register for classes. That being said, we do have our week of welcome that can assist with maybe some of the things that you will miss out on in an in-person orientation experience that we'll catch you up on when you do make it to campus, but I'll get, in, get to that in just a moment. Prior to your orientation program, in addition to your placement exams, we want to ensure that you are completing your pre-orientation program, which is a online module that truly sets you up for success for your orientation program. We understand that we are truly asking you to come to orientation with as many questions as possible because we want you to leave our orientation program with as many answers as possible. With that being said, there may be opportunities for you to learn some information prior to making it to orientation so that when you do come to campus, you have very specific questions you can ask and we can direct you into the right place. And so the pre-orientation program sets you, sets you up to know what is expected for the day, what things you need to do to prepare so that when you do make it to orientation, you know exactly how the day is gonna go and how we can assist you throughout your time on that orientation as we lead up to our first semester here at NIU. Obviously, then you attend an in-person orientation program. And so for our first year students, it is going to be a full day experience. Um, you will be receiving more information via your email once you have registered for our registered for orientation. For if we do have any transfer students on this call here today, your orientation experience is going to look a little bit differently. It's going to be more of a half day experience, but there's still going to be plenty of information for you to obtain during these portions of the program. Once again, orientation is required for you to attend, as this is going to be the time where you will meet with an advisor and register for your upcoming classes. You will not be able to register for your upcoming classes until you attend an orientation program. So if you have any questions on that process, please be sure to reach out to us at orientation at niu.edu, and we'll be able to assist you and walk you through the process again. Following our formal orientation program, we do have our POP 2.0, which is going to be our post-orientation program. This is going to help you learn more about now that you've gone through orientation, you have registered for classes, you are officially a Husky. What do I do now? How do I prepare for the upcoming semester? So if you have an orientation program date on May 30th, how do I get from May 30th to August 28th, I believe, is the first day of the upcoming semester. We want to ensure that you know exactly how you can best prepare for your experiences. And so we'll set you up with information on how you can get involved, how you can use technology to help prepare for your first semester. But then it will also get you excited and give you more information about our week of welcome. And so our week of welcome is going to be our first week prior to the start of the semester where you will move in early to truly get this extended orientation experience. You will, for those living on campus, you will move in on that Wednesday or Thursday and you will be instantly connected with our campus community to learn how that now you are on campus, how you best fit into this community. We have a lot of fun events really prepared for you um, to step foot onto campus and so we encourage you during your orientation program to start looking at our week of welcome schedule to one, get really excited. I think it's gonna be a fantastic week, um, but for you to start beginning to think about what are the things that you need to do and want to do to make you feel most comfortable for your first week of classes. That is the important aspect of our week of welcome being the first week prior to classes starting is to ensure that you have time before you actually step foot into the classroom to know what it means to be a student inside and outside of the classroom. And so within Week of Welcome, there will be plenty of opportunities for you to get, to get connected with incoming students, new students, but also our faculty and staff that will be here to support you during your whole time here at NIU. With that being said, we understand that there's a lot of different things that go into an orientation program. And so 
for those frequently asked questions, we actually do have a page designed for those frequently asked questions that were asked every single year on preparation for orientation, what I need to do, all of those steps. And so feel free to check out our website, Orientation to First Year Programs. We do have specific pages for both our first year frequently asked questions and for our incoming transfer students. We have separate pages as we do have separate programming. Additionally, within your Next Steps portal, there is a really helpful checklist that can help you prepare all throughout the summer of what you need to do next to prepare for that first semester here at NIU. So we highly recommend you downloading that, um, but then make sure that you are continually checking those first year next steps and those transfer next steps web pages to know that you are on track and ready to start your upcoming semester. But as a representative of orientation and first year programs, our office is not only truly excited to welcome you to our community, we want to ensure that whether you are really, really excited, really, really nervous, that we are ready here for you to support you every step of the way to ensure your transition to NIU is as smooth as possible. I do have a couple of questions I noted from the chat. If you don't mind me pitching them, we'll do a rapid fire. Um, yeah. Can I complete pre-orientation programs prior to registration for orientation? If you are, I would highly recommend to do it concurrently. So if you have registered for orientation, register for orientation, get your date, and then utilize the post or the pre-orientation program to learn what is upcoming. It's it's to me, my recommendation is to ensure you have the, the frame of mind of what you're stepping into every step of the way. So I would, technically you are able to do so. I would just recommend, make sure you get registered for orientation, get all of that set, and then start doing those next steps, which includes that pre-orientation program. Awesome, thank you. Next one, when is welcome week? Yeah, so week of welcome, there's a difference. Traditionally we've had welcome week and now we have week of welcome. That is going to begin on August 23rd, 2023. And so that is going to be the Wednesday before the first week of classes. And so from Wednesday through Sunday, we have intentional programming built out to ensure your transition to NIU is not only smooth, but really exciting. And so we have a lot of things planned. And so more details are to come. But during your orientation program, you will get access to the week of welcome schedule. So you can start planning out what are the things I really want to go to. We've got you set for that. Our first year students, we will be doing registration at orientation. And so at orientation, there will be a portion of the program where you will be building out your course schedule. And so depending on your major, we are going to be splitting you out into different rooms where it's going to be similar academic categories, but it won't be specific to your major. And so when you do come for orientation, we recommend that if you have we recommend that you have confirmed with what major you are looking to attend with at least three days prior so that we can ensure that the room you go to for registration has those similar students and similar programs to set you up for success as possible. For our transfer students in the room, transfer students, you will be going to your academic advising area for your specific major. So for transfer students, you will be. But for our first year students, predominantly, it will be um, within groups of majors, it won't be for your specific academic area. And you get two guests for orientation, right? It doesn't have to be a family member. It can be anyone that accompanies you. Yep, so it can be friends, family, whatever it is. We do recommend though, that when you're planning for our orientation program, especially for our first year orientation, that it is a longer day. And so if you are looking to bring smaller children, that we just want you to be aware that it is a longer day and that it, there are just a couple more logistics to think about, um, but they are more than welcome to attend. Thank you. Last question that we have, how do you change your orientation date? So if you want to change your orientation date as soon as possible, reach out to us at orientation at niu.edu and we will assist with that change to ensure that you are all set up for your upcoming program. Uh, if a student already attended orientation, when will they have access to the post-orientation program? Yep, so for our students that were able to attend our April orientation programs, the post-orientation program is supposed to be set up to go out around two weeks prior to your orientation date. And so if it hasn't gone out yet, it will be going out very soon.
niche. Thank you so much for answering orientation questions. Uh, feel free to reach out to orientation at niu.edu with any, any other questions. I know we had some questions earlier about the orientation, or uh, the enrollment fee, and uh, just wanted to clarify the enrollment fee, in fact, does cover orientation. So if you've got questions about um, potentially payment plans, or if you've got questions about um, anything related to the enrollment fee, please feel free to reach out to orientation at niu.edu. Thanks, Mitch. Now we're going to transition on over to our Northern Ambassadors who are going to be giving a virtual tour of campus. So we'll be going over a virtual tour of the school. After that, we'll talk about some housing, and that'll be this segment of pretty much Admitted Students Day. So let's get this started. All right, so to start off the virtual tour, we're going to be starting off in Barcima Alumni Visitor Center. So in this building, uh, per se, you'll be going to this building if you're involved with the Alumni Association, uh, student government possibly, and just alumni events overall. So in this one, if you were to visit school for a in-person tour, you'll be going in that building for it. So this little overview that we have right here is the Husky Stadium. So this we have all of our NIU football games, also our marching band events, our tailgate events too. Pretty much every event at NIU that you see, all the athletic events, you can attend those, no additional costs for it. And one of the perks too is that if you're bringing any non-NIU guests with you, there is a ticket fee, but if you purchase it through your NIU email account, you also get a discount with it. Continuing on over right across the street from the Barcelona Alumni Visitor Center, we got Graham Hall and right behind it is Gable Hall. So those two buildings compose our College of Education. So any College of Education majors, any education minors, Pretty much all your class will be held in one of those two buildings. And on top of that, there's also a math tutoring center in there, a dance studio lower level for any dance classes, and just also teacher's lounge. Now, this building right over here. So this building is the rec center. It's right across the street, or right, like, pretty much right next door to Bus Barcino Alumni Visitor Center. In the rec center, you get a full weight room, cutter room, indoor track, as well as get indoor basketball court, tennis court, volleyball courts. All those are accessible to you pretty much at no additional cost for it. Lydia, all you have to do when you walk right in, scan your student ID, access everything you see inside that gym. So you pretty much also got, got some fitness class available in there, nutrition classes, and PT classes too. Continue on, we got the Chick Evans Field House. So in Chick Evans Field House, a couple of things that are in this building. We do have our ROTC program in here. So if you're interested in becoming an ROTC program student at NIU, that's where you would be. Also inside will be our Husky Food Pantry, as well as some indoor track and field too, and indoor basketball courts. Now, yeah, winding around this little roundabout, we're going to be approaching Dusaba Hall in just a second. And as well as next to it, you'll have you'll see it to the left, Revis and Watson Hall. That's where we have our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So if you're interested in becoming like a reading major, writing major, history major, or if you're taking any gen ed classes like language classes, comms classes, language classes, anything like that, pretty much they'll all, all be held in one of those three buildings. And the neat thing about DuSable Rivas and Watson Hall for those three buildings, they're actually all connected by a skywalk. So if it's, if it's raining outside, it's snowing, it's too hot, you want to stay inside, go in between your classes, just take the skywalk connecting all those buildings. And you can see right there, you got that skywalk. So yeah, it definitely helps, especially if you're not if you're not new to the Midwest. You know it gets cold or hot at times, so definitely take advantage of that. But yeah, continuing on, we also have Cole Hall right here. So Quo Hall, just next to those three buildings I just talked about, is where you have our Department of Anthropology for any anthropology majors, anthropology minors. On top of that is our Pig Museum of Anthropology. It is a museum held by the NIU staff and faculty. You see right here in this little clip. And pretty much that museum changes, changes exhibits <clears throat> throughout the whole school year. You can attend those and no additional cost to that too. Now, right next door to Call Hall, literally right, right next to that building is Stevens Building. And that's where we have our performing arts and theater majors. So inside we have full black box theater. We also have student productions held throughout the school year, about 10 to 12 of them. And on top of that too, you do not have to be a theater, a theater major, a performing arts major to take an acting class at NIU. So say if you really wanna take an acting class, even has nothing to do with your major, as long as you have space in your schedule to take it, you can. So like for example, I had a friend who's like a nursing major, took an acting class, acting had nothing to do with nursing, but if by all means, if an acting class is something you wanna take, by all means, you can do it as long as it fits in your schedule. So we're going to cross this bridge. So now right there, right on that little rooftop right there, you're going to see hotel. And right next to the hotel is Neptune Residence Hall. So later near the end of the tour, or near the end of the virtual tour, we'll be going over the residence hall portion. But a couple of things to talk about for Neptune Residence Hall. 
Some of the perks of this one compared to other residence halls on campus is that it is the most affordable option. So when you're comparing all the different rates for all the different residence halls, if you want to find the most affordable option to you, pick Neptune. On top of that, Neptune is also the most centralized residence hall on campus. So if you're trying to get like a night, if you're like a 9.30 a.m. class, you wake up at 9.20, Lydia, it's a five minute walk to almost every academic building on campus too. All right, now to continue on right here, pause right here for a better, better shot of the library. We have our Founders Memorial Library. So inside the library are a couple of services that are useful for all the NIU students. So to name a few, we do have our one card services inside that building. That's where you pretty much get your student ID. If you ever lose it or if you need a replacement, that's where you go. On top of that, if you're ever like trying to get any IT services, IT services is also located inside the library. And on top of that our, is our writing tutoring center. So if, if you're going to the library for any specific needs, the top three things to consider are your one card services for your student ID, IT services, so if you have your phone broke, laptop broke, you need a laptop rental, or if you can even access your NIE email, any technology issues, their office is also located in the library. And a couple other things, we also have our writing tutoring center. So if you need any writing help, like say you need help with your essay, scholarships, really anything writing related, go to them. It definitely helps. Like say if you're trying to get that little boost of an A for one of your writing classes, if you want that extra pair of eyes, look at your paper, no penalties for it. If they critique it, pretty much you can get the help right there. And then lastly, in the lower level of the library, there is actually an Einstein bagels. So that's a big perk of it. Like if you're trying to get like a long study session, you want to go downstairs, get a bagel and coffee, definitely worth it to go downstairs. And on top of that, you can also use like your dining dollars that you get when you get the meal plans downstairs too. So it's definitely worth it. If anything, on a tangent, I do recommend getting the pizza bagels. It's definitely worth it. Also with a frappuccino on the side. Yeah, that's a win. But yeah, you can see right there, you got Einstein bagels in the lower level of the library right over here. And on top of that too, with the downstairs, you also have some more studying areas. But if you want a really completely quiet studying area, go to the very top of the fifth floor of the library. You can literally hear someone cough across the whole floor. But if you want to study outside, like during the beginning of the fall semester, near the end of the spring semester, when the weather is the best, you can study right outside here, outside the library. And the Wi-Fi does extend in this area. So that's a really good place about it. So now we're walking on over. So now we're, here we have our parking garage on campus. Parking garage, if you haven't seen a parking garage before, congrats, now you see what it looks like. But it does lead into the parking passes and pretty much how they are on campus. So when you move in on campus, or if you ever to visit NI, NIU or NIU student, you have the option to choose one or two different parking passes. You can either purchase a orange parking pass or yellow parking pass. And the way it works for the rates, it is 75 bucks per semester or 92 bucks for the whole year, August to August for either parking pass. Now you can't purchase both parking passes. You can only purchase one or the other. A common question is which one do I purchase? Well, if you're living in the on-campus residence halls, you purchase the orange parking pass. If you're living off campus, like in an off-campus apartment or you're a commuter student, purchase the yellow parking pass. So now continue on, we see lots to Red Hall right over here. So we got lots to Red Hall and right behind it will be Faraday Hall on campus. Lots Red Hall and Faraday Hall is where we have our chemistry majors, biochemistry majors and our physics majors on campus. Continue on too, we got Davis Fountain right over here. So Davis Fountain also here in the East Lagoon pretty much as we host our presidential picnic by President Lisa Freeman during your welcome week on campus. So one whole week of fun before classes start on campus. That's where pretty much all the events are held. Continue on right there, we got Davis Hall. So Davis Hall is where we have our geology, geography, and meteorology majors on campus. So if you're taking any of those classes, look at the very top of the building, you see the, observ the observatory on top, that is the building for you, for your major or for your minor. And on top of that, you can actually visit the observatory too. It's not just for show. All you gotta do is pretty much schedule an appointment up there and it's first come first serve to get a spot in the observatory. So then continuing on, right next to Davis Hall actually would be Swen Parson Hall. So Swen Parson Hall has two main purposes on campus. It's known to be the money building on campus as well as our college of law. So if you're interested in becoming a law student or if you're a pre-law student, a lot of your class will be inside that library. That's where you got a full law library for all the NIU students, a complete mock trial room. But on top of that is also where you have our financial aid bursars or scholarship office inside that building. So two main purposes to get out of Swen Parson, money building on campus, as well as college of law. Now, right there, we got Williston office. That's where we have our study abroad office on campus. 
So pretty much if you're ever interested in studying abroad, these are some of the countries that we do have available for the NIU students like Austria, Spain, uh, Madagascar. And on top of that, there are different students who visit other countries. In the past, we visited other countries like Vietnam, pretty much any country you can possibly think of. There's usually a campus located there that is, a, that is connected with NIU. Continuing on with that one, we got Alt Geld Hall. So Alt Geld Hall, pretty much like the money shop on campus, the money shop building right there. You'll see that building you see when you look up NIU or if you when you're passing the school. But inside Alt Geld Hall, there are some resources available for all the NIU students, one of which is like our research um, experiences that we have for NIU students. So if you're ever interested in working alongside other staff and faculty on campus, like say if any career interest that you have, you wanna gain insight as soon as possible. And there you can pretty much contact the research office there to get research experience with other professors on campus or other staff or faculty. But if you also just wanna go there for fun, just recently we do have our esports arena inside Alt Gale Hall too. So if you wanna play video games inside the building, if you wanna look at the different computers, you wanna use computers there, even bring your own gaming stuff you want, pretty much you can go there in Alt Gale Hall for the esports arena that they just actually added last year. So then right outside Alka Hall, you see Olive Goyle. So Olive Goyle is like a secondary mascot on campus. Pretty much she used to be at the top of Alka Hall, like the instructor down two times after the second attempt, you're like, screw it. We're just gonna keep her down here on the, on the floor right here. It's like a secondary mascot on campus for all the NIU students. Now, right here, we got Still Hall. So we got Still Hall in that building. And then also next to it would be Still Gym. So Still Hall and Still Gym is where we have events such as our engineering technology majors, as well as office space for staff and faculty. So if you're interested in engineering technology, a lot of your class will be in Still Hall. And on top of that, if you're interested pretty much to talk with any engineering technology staff or faculty too, they'll be in Still Gym. All right, so now we're heading to East Lagoon. So what you see here at East Lagoon, pretty much is a nice little quiet space to just relax, honestly, in between your class or after class. When it's frozen outside, when the whole lagoon freezes over, you can go ice skating, as you see right there. Or when it's warmer out, like it is during the spring semester, you can go kayak and canoeing right now. I think if you want to, you can rent a kayak canoe. There's a special sale for the last bit of the semester for like five bucks an hour. So honestly, not bad at all. Now passing on, we see Jack Aaron's building here. So Jack Aaron's art building, so we have all your art majors on campus. So any art class you can think of is usually held in that building. So pottery, sculpting, painting, drawing, pretty much anything you can think of as art related is in that building. And on top of that, you do not have to be an art major or art minor taking art class at NIU. So if you want to take an art class, as long as it fits within your schedule, by all means, you can take art class if you want. Going into the music building on campus, this way also, if you guessed it, your music majors, music minors on campus. And just like I said, for the art building, pretty much if you're a music major or music minor, you can take art take music classes here. But on top of that, you do not have to be a music major or music minor taking music class. So if you want to take a music class, you can. But one of the perks to the music building is that if you want to take any tutoring sessions, we also do offer um, music tutoring sessions for all the NIU students too. So now this little bird's eye view, this is actually a nice view of the whole campus as you see right here, because you have Gilbert Residence Hall here right in front of you. That's where we have our residence halls for upperclassmen. So upperclassmen, if you're a sophomore standing or above, you can live in that residence hall, but also this is just a nice view of the school because if you see right behind it, you have Words Hall, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But on top of that, you see other landmark buildings on campus. And the, in the background, you see the four towers, so Grand Towers and Stevens Towers, and you can pretty much get a whole view of the size of the campus here at NIU. All right, right across the street from the music building will be Anderson Hall. Anderson Hall does have an open lane pool, as you see right here in this clip. Also, that in Anderson Hall is where we actually have our cadaver lab. So if you're interested in any cadaver classes, that's where you go for Anderson Hall. And on top of that would be your engineering, our physical education majors, kinesiology majors, as well as sports management. So you see here just a couple of clips on campus. So you have, a, you have our NIU basketball team here, and also you have our NIU Cares Day. So these are just a couple of events that can get involved in on campus. So if you get, get involved playing around campus, you can, as well, if you wanna be involved with sports, like we have our NIU basketball team, or you have any club sports or intramural sports available to you too. Now, right behind Anderson Hall was the engineering building. So the engineering building, as you guessed it, engineering majors on campus. So if you're taking any engineering majors, computer engineering, mechanical engineering, pretty much all those are pretty much right inside the engineering building, excluding engineering technology. So that's the little trick for that one. 
but right behind the engineering building would be Barcima Hall. Barcima Hall is where we have our College of Business. So if you're interested in becoming a business major, that's where you go for all your classes. Barcima Hall is the only building open on campus 24 seven. And on top of that, Barcima Hall was actually donated by NIU alumni here, Dennis and Stacy Barcima. They donated $12 million, $12 million to that building to be built. So not vodka change, definitely a lot for that building to be built. But on top of that, inside the building, you got the Three Sons Beast shown there, named after the three kids, as you see right over there. And right outside is Dad's Pond. That was a pond built for Dennis Barcima's father. But if anything, nice little spot to actually study, even if you're not a business major, especially if you're going to go for those late night study sessions. If you want to go study past midnight, if you want to study past that, go to Barcima Hall. It is the only building open on campus 24-7 for all the NIU students. So now we're gonna talk about a couple of cultural resource centers on campus, just for a brief moment. So while these all load up, as you can see, as they're popping up on your screen, got one more, there we go. So we do have our Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, our Latino Resource Center. We also have our Asian, Asian American Resource Center, Center for Black Studies, Disability Resource Center, and Undocumented Student Support. So if you, if anything, if you, even if you don't identify with any of the groups that you see right here, by all means, you can actually be involved with everything that you see here on campus. So if you want to be involved with any of these resource centers, even if you don't identify with them, you definitely could be an ally and also can be involved with them on campus. And then once again, as well, just to reiterate, if you have any questions as you're seeing like through this presentation, by all means, put those questions down in the chat right there. Thank you, Josh. We're super grateful you've been able to go through some of this. I know uh, we're reaching uh, the end of the tour itself and the end of the program. Um, so we do know that it ends at four. Um, if yeah. anybody needs to jump off, you're more than welcome to. But um, I know Josh has a, a couple of other points he wants to make. So I'll let you continue. But feel free to continue asking questions in the chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So just to add on to that, too. Yeah, we have about like four minutes about this virtual tour. And then afterwards, if any of you are still interested to learn about housing, we'll go over housing for about five to 10 minutes. But other than that, I will respect the time too. So by all means, once it reaches four o'clock, if you do have to go, completely understand that too. But yeah, for the rest of the tour though, inside Words Hall, which you saw in just a moment right here, we have inside Words Hall, our College of Health and Human Sciences. So if you're interested in pre-health, that's where your, all your information is at. And on top of that is our fashion merchandising. Now in this clip right here, we do have the health services building on campus. So here we do offer health services as well as police and public safety for all NIU students. But rehashing back for the health services building on campus, pretty much we offer you any health services ranging from as small as a Band-Aid to an X-ray. But if you get any health services larger than that, we do offer ambulance service to Kishwaukee Hospital from NIU. And basically that is through the NIU health insurance plan. But if you have your own health insurance plan that is equal or exceeding the characteristics of the NIU one, you can use your own health insurance plan and, uh, and opt out of the NIU one. But as you see right here, going through that clip, we do have our, also our Campus Safe app on campus too. So if you ever need help on campus, free app on campus, you can download, pretty much request an officer to come to your location as soon as possible. Now we're just gonna zoom past here for the Peters Campus Life Building. Inside the Campus Life Building is just known to be the main resource center on campus. So if you need any resources here, we also have our office, like our Northern Star, our Northern Newspaper, our Honors Program, Undocumented Student Support, our Veterans Office, just to name a few things. But the main just to get out of being the camp, being inside of Peter's Campus Life Building, it's pretty much the main resource center on campus. So then continue on this way, go inside just in a bit past this intersection would be the Home Student Center. So in the Home Student Center, it's also just the main hub for all the NIU students, as you'll see right there, we'll be entering in just a moment. But inside there, you also have the hotel on campus too. So that's not just pretty much an eyesore right there. Pretty much a good landmark spot too. So if you're walking on campus, you ever lost on campus too, but it looks straight up, dead center on campus for that hotel. Otherwise, inside the Home Student Center, is just the main hub for all the NIU students. You get a couple on-campus restaurants inside there. You got a Starbucks in there too. Upstairs, you got piano if you don't want to play piano. You also have the Husky Dan right over here. So we do offer bowling for all the NIU students. Also got pool tables you can use. And on top of that, usually each month, there's always, always like one big event for all the NIU students. So in the past, you see right here, we had the Glow in the Dark Disco. We had also open mic night, karaoke night. And all these monthly events are something you can also attend each month on campus. 
no additional cost to you. Pretty much also get weekly emails about what's happening as an NIU student and pretty much something fun for you to do outside finishing your classes throughout the semester. Also inside the Home Student Center is our NIU bookstore too. So you gotta get your books, anything in between, school supplies or any, any t-shirts, hoodies, anything like that. If you wanna buy any of the souvenirs, bookstore inside Home Student Center is the place to go. And then lastly, as we're nearing the end of the virtual tour video, we're just talking about the MLK comments right here. Pretty much just a little hub for all the booths and different organizations on campus. And then lastly, to wrap it up, as you can see right over here, just a little overview of the whole campus, as you can see, got pretty much a lot of stuff to do on campus. So if you want to do clubs and sports, fraternities, sororities, anything like that, pretty much there's always a spot for you to be involved on campus. If anything, I do recommend when you go to NIU, definitely attend all at least one of these events on campus too. You won't regret it. And if anything, it's also fun to attend it. But yeah, this pretty much wraps up the virtual tour of today's Admitted Students Day. So once again, I'm going to go into the housing portion of the tour. So then lastly, for the Admitted Students Day right here, we're going to talk about the housing portion. Now, for this site right here, it is accessible for all of you outside of, outside of today's meeting. Pretty much, if you look up NIU Housing or NIU Residential Services, is the first thing that pops up. But the main important thing when it comes to choosing houses is this one right here. This little tab right here, compare halls and rates. Because not only do you get to choose all the, the, your three top residence halls you want to compare, but it also tells you more about like the different logistics about them, the pricing, amenities included. So if, for example, let's go into Neptune Residence Hall. So here it has pretty much all everything you can, usually a lot of the common questions are answered. So it usually tells you the rate, what's included inside the residence hall itself, the different building types, updated furniture included, or what furniture is included or not included, which you can and can't bring. But one of the cool things you can do is if you ever don't see the residence halls in person, if you do the 360 view right here and you click on it, it'll bring you down. You can pretty much do like a drag and drop of the residence hall to kind of get a gist of what you see in all of them. So if you ever to visit on campus, you can actually check out the residence halls on campus in person. But if you can't, by all means, you can also do it right here. And the cool thing about this website too is that whenever you're looking at these ones, if you want to do like a 3D rendering view, you get a bird's eye view of the layout of it. So if you ever want to bring in like, like an extra like, like small bookcase if you want or a small little wardrobe if you want to add some more stuff in your room or you want to bring decorations, it also tells you the square footage so you know exactly the size of everything. And on top of that, this site is also really useful for you too. So when you're picking out your residence halls, if you want to pretty much choose which one you want to sign up for, this is where you go. But then when it comes to moving in for your residence halls, once you confirm which re whichever residence hall you're living in and once your either your possible roommate is also assigned for that room too. So once that's all sorted out, you'll be getting that email from Housing and Residential Services prompting you about your arrival time and also specific instructions too. So if you're worried about what time am I going to have to show up to move in, where am I going to go, how is the whole process, they give you like a whole email, like literally direction, like step by step, like which roads to take, what time to go in, where to check in, what to bring in, and pretty much help the whole process go as smoothly as possible. Um, somebody was asking about Stevenson Hall, uh, the suites with the bathrooms. I believe there are virtual views on those websites too. So Stevenson, as our Stevenson Towers, all right. Are you interested in the bathroom one? Yeah, so for this one, most likely the single rooms are the ones that usually go out the fastest, just as a disclaimer for that one. So usually incoming freshmen, if you're trying to get a single, that is usually by chance, but usually the doubles are the, are the most common options that we have. But if you did 360 view right here, this is pretty much the layout for it. So pretty much you have your double right here between you and your roommate. And right here, if you see where it has floor lobby, so we're to enter that. This is the lounge that you see right outside of your residence hall for Stevenson. And outside of that, you'll have access to the elevator right here. And down the hallway will either be a single room for the other roommate, usually clusters of three for Stevenson, or the bathroom is right here for you to share between you and your roommate and other single room on campus. All righty. If you are still looking to get to campus, I encourage you to reach out to visits at niu.edu. Most of our days are filled up at this point. 
Um, so we want to make sure that we can try to accommodate you, but we do have self-guided tours available for printing. I'm going to ask one of the admission counselors, uh, link the self-guided tour. You can print one out and walk around our campus. We are open. You don't need to register with us. I think that one of the things that I was under the impression needed to happen was I needed to get access into buildings. You'll find also our public buildings are open, so you can go in, check out the spaces as well. Is there a waiver I would have to fill out if I'm commuting to campus? Uh, yes, there is. There is a housing exemption. Um, it was posted within the chat a little bit earlier. We can certainly repost it right now. Um, if you live um, 50 miles or closer uh, to campus, you can submit that. I want to take a moment to congratulate you once again. We are super excited to welcome you to campus. Um, NIU is a spectacular place to be for so many reasons, academically, uh, because of the research opportunities that we offer. Uh, but I think that as part of our, of our mission and values, one of the things that we are very proud to talk about is our sense of belonging and inclusion on campus. We've got we've received multiple awards for this, um, and, and those are vetted to the highest levels. Um, but I wanted to share them because um, not only did Josh mention some of our resource centers, but we because we prioritize inclusion and belonging on campus, there are a lot of opportunities for all of us to continue to learn from each other. But I do want to say uh, we encourage you to be yourself. We encourage you to. Uh, explore. After all, college is all about exploring. Uh, you can do that through academic programs. You can do that through social events. You can do that through uh, the lifelong bonds that you are going to form on campus. So if there's anything we can do to assist you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Admissions at niu.edu. Go Huskies!